This year has not failed any of our expectations, unfortunately. When I was a little girl, I remember probably first or second grade, driving down the highway in Dallas, the back seat, and my daddy had Paul Harvey on. Now, many of y'all probably don't remember Paul Harvey because I'm a lot older than most in this chamber, I know. But Paul Harvey was famous for, he was a newsman, and he was famous for saying the rest of the story, and that's the rest of the story. And so as I sit here and listen to another day of charlatans throwing smoke screens, I find it that I'm very compelled to tell you the rest of the story. We have heard up, in, up until this point, so eight days or nine days of session, we have heard almost every single day that the Republicans didn't pass the property tax cut. Well, I'm going to give you the rest of the story. Final day of session, I pulled a bill out of fiscal oversight. We added that tax cut on and some other things that were being required because everyone in this chamber knows, everyone in the chamber across the rotunda knows that it's a tug of war between the House and the Senate and getting priorities done and with the leadership of both chambers and you can't you can't cross out if we get a little bit of order in this area if you have a conversation please take it outside thank you senator you may proceed thank you you can't cross out one leadership in either house you have to take both into consideration because that is the way that our founding fathers actually set up the whole legislative process. So for those of you who always want to talk about what was initially intended, that was initially intended. So this is the way our system is set up, so we should go and follow the proper process. In that process, we had the Speaker of the House who wanted sports betting. Many of the rest of us want sports betting too. Sports betting is not my wheelhouse. I've never placed a bet on sports. But I can tell you that's what I hear the most about down in southeast Missouri from my constituents because we are surrounded by states that allow sports betting. So guess what else was in this bill I pulled out of fiscal oversight? Sports betting. I included it because the speaker wasn't going to pass our property tax cut until we send him sports betting. Well, we had members in this chamber who didn't trust the speaker to pass. If we passed sports betting, they didn't trust him to pass that. So then it became a timing thing. Well, who's supposed to pass first thing? Who's going to trust the other one to pass first thing? Fine. That's what politics is about. So we put it all on this bill. We met in the pro tem's office. And I said, here's the bill. It's got sports betting on it. It's got the property tax on it. It's got some of the other things that others were filibustering about on it. Let's pass it. I've talked to the speaker. The speaker's agreed to pass it. Let's send it to him. He's going to pass it. We're going to have all the things that everybody's been crying about, but nobody's been actually working and doing the work to actually get it passed because they'd rather come out here and make speeches that they can then put on social media and start saying, oh, I tried this, I tried that, and everybody else shut me down. Well, you know what? I got almost every piece of legislation I was working on that I had filed done last year because I work my bills. I don't just come out here and talk about them. Blame everybody else for my inadequacies. So, y'all can guess what happened in the pro-tem's office. The people who are now up on this floor 
complaining about us not getting property tax cut done last year said, no, we're not passing a bill with sports betting in it. So they gave up everybody's property tax cut because they didn't want sports betting. That was last year's rest of the story. Now, congressional map was brought up today. We had one senator throw in a hissy fit about every single precinct that he needed to get into his congressional map so that he could run for Congress when a congressional representative decided to retire, who has now decided to retire. That's why we did the unusual move, the rare move, to get that bill to the floor. Because we had to have a congressional map and one man's hissy fit to make sure the congressional map was drawn for him particularly was not our major concern. Now, last week we heard about 48-hour rule. We need 48 hours to read a bill when the omnibus bills come in. When an omnibus bill is made, it is made up of bills that we have been working on for months. I'm dyslexic, and I don't need more than the time that we are allowed now to read the bills because I have already been studying them. I have already been reading them, and I can read that bill when it gets put on my desk. And if I can't, I am a senator, and I can hold this floor up as long as I need to and go through every line that I need to go through. But when we took that vote, because those of us who didn't feel that we need to now change the process, it does actually work. Then you have the charlatans put on Facebook, well, Republicans have voted, the rhinos have voted with the Democrats again and voted us down. No, sir. Fifteen Republicans voted against five who want to have their name in the paper 12 times a day. That's what happened last week. You want to talk about the women's sports sunset? You know why sunset got put on women's sports? It's because we had one senator last year who wanted to have this done before spring break. Knowing that if we got to the end of session, we would do a PQ and get that bill passed. But oh no. He wasn't okay with the process that has worked for years. He wanted his bill up before spring break. So he insisted on it. So then we had to negotiate some of it away to stop a filibuster. Because, as I just made in my previous rest of the story, one senator can hold up progress on this floor as long as they want to. Now we're going to talk about the IP reform. IP reform is necessary, and I'm not somebody who cares about percentages, okay? And I don't think we need to take away the people's process in a, in a lackadaisical, haphazard, we want to get this done, we're going to throw this out there kind of way. This is the people's process of being able to bring something to the ballot. And it should not be done that way. But the rest of the story for last year, we did, as the floor leader mentioned earlier, we did pass it off this floor. And it was ready. The House did send us their version back. It was ready to be voted on again. 
but one of the charlatans decided to filibuster the last few days, so IP reform, the final vote, did not get made. So the final vote on IP reform last year that would have prevented what we are seeing now with the pro-choice movement from going to the ballot, that was stopped by the ones who are now trying to blame us for what they did? We should not even be in this situation. But here we are. IP reform is a priority. The priority piece that I feel for IP reform is that the rural voices need to be heard. Right now the process can be passed, something can get on the ballot without finding out how the rural areas of this state feel. That must change. But that needs to go through committee and we need to come up to a consensus and we need to work the process. When something gets hap happens like what they're recommending that we do today, which I'm going to vote against because, once again, they do not care about getting stuff passed. They have not passed legislation because of their inadequacies, because they do not work their bills, because they come to this floor and make threats and do this type of tactics instead of working a bill through the process. I have filed bills over and over. I am very pro-life. You will not find one vote of mine that is not pro-life. Missouri is a pro-life state. Abortions are not allowed in Missouri. But what about the kids that are here today? What about the number of children that have died this past year? from abuse and neglect, do we care about them? Have the ones crying about IP reform and all these other bills, have they filed anything to help what these kids are going through in the foster care system? Have they filed anything to help with maternal mortality rate? Because I have. How about infant mortality rate in Missouri? Have they filed any bills for that? 450 babies died at birth last year. 23 moms. 23 moms. You know some of those had children at home that then lost their mother. And we care about the children that are born as well. It is such an honor to have this job. It is such an honor to be able to fight for legislation to help people that have suffered the way that I have grown up in domestic violence and sexual abuse, child abuse. And those folks depend on us. They depend on us and they don't know us. They know me. I mean, my people know me. But we, we have the ability, and I just, God has, has commanded us to help. And when we continue to fight, to have a fight, to get our name in the paper, shame on those who are doing that. It's incredibly disappointing to know that you work this hard to get in such a powerful position don't use your power for good. I will be voting no on this motion.